Greetings, and bienvenue, Midna crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. Forward. Any links mentioned in this thread will be posted in the description. Battelle, UFOs, and the disclosure phenomena. Hey slash X slash, let's talk about Battelle Memorial Institute and UFOs. Battelle's this huge nonprofit organization based in Ohio. They're a 501 C3, but they're not your typical charity. They're into all sorts of scientific and tech research, and they handle labs for the Department of Energy. Despite being a nonprofit, they pull in a whopping 6.1 billion in revenue. Makes you wonder, right? Battelle is classified under the Atomic Secrets Classification System, which is outside of the Executive and State Department, because it's a 501 C3, a charitable organization. It's not subject to freedom of information requests and operates outside the normal channels of government and business. Now comes this guy named David Charles Grush, who's been stirring the pot stating that the US government and defense contractors have been picking up pieces of non-human tech for years. He's talking about stuff that's out of this world, literally and figuratively. So where does Battelle fit into all this? Well, if Grush is right and there's alien tech to be studied, who better than a major scientific research institute like Battelle? What if Battelle isn't just a research institute? What if they're a shadow agency, working behind the scenes on stuff that's way out there? Think about it. Battelle's got their fingers in a lot of pies. They're handling labs for the Department of Energy. They're pulling in billions in revenue. And they're involved in all sorts of advanced research. And they're a non-profit, which means they don't have to answer to shareholders, government bureaucracy, or worry about making a profit. They can focus on the research. Battelle manages or co-manages several national labs for the Department of Energy. These labs are involved in all sorts of research, a lot of which is classified or secret. Given how much Battelle is involved with these labs and the Department of Energy, it's not a stretch to think they could be involved in some of the classified projects or research related to UFOs. The Department of Energy is super secretive, with its own classification systems and policies. Some of these are even classified themselves. This level of secrecy could potentially allow for projects related to UFOs or other advanced tech to be conducted under the radar. Plus, the Department of Energy's role in maintaining and developing the US's nuclear weapons stockpile could potentially link to the sightings of UFOs near nuclear facilities, a phenomenon that has been reported multiple times. If there are advanced tech being developed or tested, it would make sense for these to be located near such high security and high importance facilities. Now, let's look at some of the stuff they've worked on. They've been involved in projects like developing the Xerox machine, the Polaris missile program, the first nuclear fuel rods for the Nautilus, the world's first nuclear submarine. Battelle manages the following labs for the DEO Brookhaven National Laboratory, does research in physical, biomedical, and environmental sciences, as well as energy tech and national security. If there's any tech from non-human crafts, it could potentially be studied here. Idaho National Laboratory, the nation's lead lab for nuclear energy research. UFO sightings often happen near nuclear facilities. Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, mainly works on national security and also involved in energy, environmental science, and economic competitiveness. Its focus on advanced defense tech could potentially involve research related to UFOs, Los Alamos National Laboratory, known for developing the first atomic bomb, now works on nuclear deterrence, reducing global nuclear threats, and understanding the universe. Any advanced propulsion systems or energy sources from non-human crafts could be of interest here. National Renewable Energy Laboratory specializes in renewable energy and energy efficiency research. If UFOs use a form of clean, renewable energy for propulsion, this lab would be a likely candidate for studying such tech. Oak Ridge National Laboratory conducts research in materials, neutron science, energy production, and biological systems. Their materials research could be crucial if UFOs are made of unknown materials. Battelle is the real-world aperture science. Think about it for a second. Shadowy operations, aperture science thrives in the shadows, conducting experiments that defy the laws of physics. Battelle, too, operates under a veil of secrecy. They've been linked to classified projects like the Manhattan Project 
and the development of the Universal Product Code. Government ties. Aperture science seems to operate with impunity, conducting dangerous experiments without oversight. Battelle, a major government contractor, has a close relationship with the U.S. government. Could this connection provide them with a certain level of autonomy in their research? Tax-exempt status. Just like Aperture Science seems to have unlimited resources, Battelle, as a nonprofit, enjoys a tax-exempt status. This financial advantage allows them to funnel more resources into their diverse research projects. Extraterrestrial research. The most tantalizing parallel? Rumors of Battelle's involvement in UFO research and reverse engineering of non-human technologies. If true, this would place them firmly in Aperture Science territory, pushing the boundaries of what we believe is scientifically possible. Location. Both Aperture and Battelle are tucked away in the heartland of America. Aperture is hidden beneath the salt mines of Michigan, while Battelle has access to the most secure and secret labs in America. This provides them the privacy they need for their clandestine operations. TLDR, Battelle Memorial Institute shares intriguing parallels with Aperture Science from the Portal games, including secretive operations, groundbreaking technology, government ties, and rumors of UFO research. Life imitates art, completely crazy. According to a Dutch reporter from Review, there's a queue of whistleblowers ready to support David Grush's explosive disclosure. The main event? The Mussolini UFO, crashed in Lombardy, 1933. We've got signed documents and photographs hinting that the US snagged the wreckage and squirreled it away in a top secret hangar. A select group of journalists got the scoop in The Hague a few weeks ago. They even got a peek at the documents. Moskovich, one of the attendees, shared a document in a video last week. He's betting this is the bombshell Grush is set to drop on Sunday. I can tell you this, I, um, like my audience, they're, they're watching right now. But uh, two weeks ago, uh, my source, um, out of the blue, called me up. He said, you have to come right now. I'm going to show you something. Something is going to be dropped in a couple of weeks. That was this. And um, whatever Mr. Uh, Grush is telling, I saw the documentation signed by the Inspector General. So it is legit. I saw it. Rumor has it there's more intel waiting in the wings, but Moskowitz is keeping his lips sealed for now. Here's the twist. Documents straight from Mussolini's office back up the cover-up theory. Complete media silence, no intel sharing with the scientific community. I've got a note here about the 1933 UFO incident. If Grush's revelation confirms extraterrestrial tech, we might need to take a closer look at Battelle. Who better to analyze it than the world's largest nonprofit research and development organization? As a nonprofit, it's not subject to freedom of information requests or government audits. That's what the poster from this thread was claiming. According to him, some UFOs are manufactured by an autonomous facility in the Atlantic Ocean. Check out Tetsuya's video covering that thread. It's linked in the description. His claims match up with the ones of David Charles Grush. Given Battelle's background in material science and Grush's claims, it's possible to speculate that Battelle could be one of the defense contractors involved in the retrieval and study of non-human technologies that is mentioned in the thread. Check this out. If you search for Gordon Battelle aliens, this is the second result that shows up on Google. Gordon was the founder of the Institute. Here's a few of the interesting things that pop up. I've included page numbers next to each point for easy reference. The dawn of Project Stork, 1947. Battelle was contracted to conduct metallurgical studies on unidentified materials, a task they undertook with great secrecy. Page 12, the Roswell Connection, 1947. In the same year, the infamous Roswell incident occurred. The document suggests that Battelle was given material from the Roswell crash for analysis, a claim that has fueled countless debates. This matches up with what Valley said on Joe Rogan. During the 1940s and 1950s, Battelle was surely one of the premier metallurgy research facilities in the world. Battelle was well established as a trusted and respected facility for top secret work, including the Manhattan Project. Its staff included top metallurgists, welding technology experts, physical chemists, and fuel application specialists. The supposition that Battelle analyzed Roswell or other UFO artifacts is a simple and obvious theory. 
William of Ockham would have approved. The Shadow Government, 1960s. Battelle's influence extended into the shadowy corners of governance. Battelle was part of a covert group that had influence over the government's UFO policies. MJ-12, a supposed secret committee of scientists, military leaders, and government officials, held meetings at various confidential locations, including the Battelle Memorial Institute. The Institute's involvement in these matters seems to be related to discussions and research on extraterrestrial life and UFOs. This the tip of the iceberg. Keep digging. Keep questioning. Please take a look at this video. It was published six months ago. What was going on? The uh, family of the Undertaker told about the small coffins that were created for the alien bodies. And my Air Force family friend said yes, he had heard the same thing from uh, Major Brazil. Uh, and uh, each one of them just told what their portion of the activity was all about. So putting it all together, the sum total was, yes, it was an alien spacecraft. After I came back from space and was lecturing around and visiting back home. For the full video, check the description. Dr. Edgar Mitchell was an astronaut who was part of the Apollo 14 mission and the sixth person to walk on the moon discusses his experiences regarding the Roswell incident and the existence of extraterrestrial life. Mitchell discusses the alleged cover-up of the existence of non-human craft and materials by the Pentagon and military contractors. He suggests that these entities keep the non-human spacecraft in different locations and move them around for research. His claims match up with the recent allegations by the whistleblower. He talks about a high-level committee convened by President Truman to examine the UFO phenomenon. This could potentially refer to the Majestic 12 group referenced in the document as working with Battelle. Top comment on one of the whistleblower videos. As a current aero engineer for the US Air Force, 26 years and still going, I can help you decode at least some of this. First, I know that Grush has only limited ability to talk about this subject. He did get clearance to speak to a certain extent, but he must withhold quite a bit in order to avoid very serious law violations. So expect him to be holding back some things he could say. And this also necessitates rephrasing on the fly language he would normally use. Second, this retrieval program is real and is the most highly classified program in the US. The program is called Zodiac, and this may or may not come out in the public hearings soon. Take this in when viewing this man's speech. He is trying to talk to us about the most highly classified project in the world. People have historically died, lost careers, lost family due to this secret. So to say this is stressful to talk about would be an understatement. Third, when he shook his head talking about the spacecraft and alien is because we don't really think this is what they are. But this term is in common use publicly and is as close as we can describe the phenomena to the general public and be understood. These are much more than spacecraft. They are transmedium interdimensional craft to the best of our knowledge. And on the alien aspect, this is just the easiest term we have because we don't really know for sure, but this term is pretty close. At present, we consider most of these beings to be advanced biological AI, manufactured beings. Lastly, I can tell you from my own experience while on duty, these are real. I can tell you this because I was present on two occasions where these craft were above our base watching us. I wasn't read into this program. I can only tell you I was there on two occasions and they are as real as the nose on your face. Very interesting, and this lines up with my own theories. Let's do a rundown of what we know and can maybe conclude from the more credible leaks and events. 1. Navy pilots see a flying object described as a black cube inside a translucent sphere. Two. Grush claims government has recovered debris and intact craft and that some have dead pilots. 3. Schellenberger article says insider sources say the U.S. has 12 or more craft and that one or two are recovered every five years. Also that sometimes the occupants simply wander off and leave them. 4. Schellenberger's article claims only 100 to 700 people have ever been read into the recovery program. That low of a number could definitely keep a secret. For comparison, the National Reconnaissance Office was kept secret for 30 years while employing tens of thousands of contractors. 5. The slash X slash thread from the person dying of cancer states the UFOs are constructed in the ocean by a large mothership that creates custom craft for each mission. 
The government believes the mothership has been here for at least 100 years, and it will destroy things that approach it aggressively. States the creatures view us like a zookeeper would, and only get interested when we fight each other. This person repeats some of the Lazar claims about Element 115, and is the least credible on this list. Let's assume these statements are mostly true. What possibilities can we draw from the behavior of the craft and beings? From these reports, they don't care about the craft or their own well-being on an individual level. What could explain that? They could be non-biological or non-sentient pilots, drones, so to speak, created for a specific task. This would imply that whatever is creating them is the actual intelligence, which also may not be biological. Perhaps whatever is creating these is here on Earth, under the sea, and is an AI-driven construct. It could even be left over from the original seeding of life on the planet, as there are reports of these strange objects all throughout recorded history. They could be avatars from a different plane of existence. Think about the behavior and compare it yourself when playing a video game. Do you care if you crash your vehicle in the game? Do you care about recovering it? No, of course not. Perhaps they are players, and this is all some kind of simulation or game. Maybe they are even cheaters, and some of us are the real players. Then the Flat Earthers showed up to try to take over the thread. I love how every time someone creates a well-thought thread to have a discussion, it's an inevitability that some silly Flat Earth goof suddenly shows up out of nowhere. Really doesn't matter what the topic is, as long as it's related to potential cover-ups in fields related to science and government. It almost seems as if they appear for the sole purpose of discrediting a topic through association. Curious wanderers pass by and have their interests piqued by a discussion. Then they decide to open the thread and read. Where they get to enjoy some thought-provoking dialogue, then, as surely as the sun will rise, a couple of people appear and start screaming about Flat Earth and the cover-up associated with it. Obviously, the intent is to make it so the casual reader will see their post and think, oh, these people are just crazy and off their rocker at which point many will begin to dismiss everything they've read up until that point, even though it has no relation to the tater tot brain flat earth shit. Sure, if it occurred once or twice it could easily be dismissed as simple coincidence and an instance, where a legitimately dumb person is still stuck at the starting line of life, but the fact that it happens in nearly every single thread without fail would suggest that it's anything but coincidental. It's deliberate. I found a map of the Battelle sites in the USA and I'll compare it with UFO sightings, disappearances, military bases, and any other mysterious happenings. A lot of them are on the east side close to New York. I remember hearing someone questioning why so many physicists and scientists are moving up to New York to work on apparently misguided physics. I can't remember who but he wasn't a conspiracy guy, just a scientist. That misguided physics might be a front for what they're truly working on. Here's a quick UFO sighting map. I've circled the Battelle locations. Looks like all of them are in hot spots. Major cities are one thing, but it's weird even the one in the middle of Idaho has a hot spot. Oh and here's the link to where I got the Battelle locations. Anon links an article about the Battelle-Roswell connection. Full article linked below. Thank you for sharing. Just got done diving into this article and boy, does it resonate with a lot of what we've been tossing around in this thread. Here's a couple of things that caught my attention. Battelle's contract with Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. The article mentions that Battelle was contracted in the late 1940s to study the so-called memory metal from the Roswell crash site. In the late 1940s, Battelle was contracted by Wright-Patterson Air Force Base to study memory metal, like the debris that was found at the site of a crashed UFO at Roswell, New Mexico. Battelle Memorial Institute and Wright-Patterson Air Force Base are both in Ohio. Elroy John Center's confession. Elroy John Center, a scientist at Battelle, apparently confessed to having analyzed material from another world. Battelle scientist Elroy John Center was a preeminent material scientist and engineer. He confessed to having analyzed material from another world while at Battelle. This isn't just wild conjecture anymore. It's starting to feel like we're onto something real here. And you know what's really interesting? This all lines up with what David Charles Grush has been saying. And let's not forget that video of astronaut Edgar Mitchell that was posted earlier. It's all starting to connect. This is from page 16 of the Battelle document. 
Interesting, because this backs up the claims being made by David and the astronaut mentioned in the thread about a shadow organization within the government. The results of the Battelle Memorial Institute study were finally released as Blue Book Special Report No. 14. The study had a number of flaws and concluded that improved methods of investigation and reporting would result in all UFO sightings being explained as ordinary phenomena. The cross letter was significant because it implied that a group of specialists working in the shadows on the most massive UFO study to date had the power to keep critical information from a prestigious national security panel. Seems like the feds want to move the conversation away from Battelle. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes midnight central time. Remember to check out the Odyssey page in the description for a second archive of the channel's videos. There's also a Rumble archive as a backup.